I'm John DeArman. And I'm Edward. And we're with the Kokia Valley Sword Group. And today we're going over the application for the Nagashi Uchi Kata. So let's start off by giving a demonstration of the Kata and then going over its key applications. All right. So once again, I'll be Uchidachi and he will be Shidachi. So, with Nagashi Uchi, what we're studying is, just as the name implies, the flow of striking. Now this, um, this is not just how you keep your sword in flow while your opponent's sort of harassing it and while you're failing and how you sort of regroup yourself, but it's also how you capitalize on the overall rhythm. So. Uh, we'll break down the, the applications you can have first and then talk a little bit more about the specific applications that we're really interested in. So, first exchange, uh, Eddie's going to be Uchidachi. He swings, of course, I can make that uh, classic Ukinagashi motion to his wrist with a cut to his body with a slash, or a cut and a cut, or a slash and a cut, or however I sort of want to separate them. I can also um, work at uh, a variety of distances with this. This is very similar to Ukanagashi, obviously. You know, you can come in, down, body, cross body, into the body. Um, into the back of the knee and the tsune, the chin, you know, whatever your, your sort of flavor is. Ba, and he parries, <laughs> and he cuts. Okay, try again. So, here he comes, he swings. One, two, he steps out of the way. Boom, right? So this, Rhythmic interaction. It's supposed to be rhythmic. rhythmic. <laughs> it's a rhythm of some sort. <laughs> this is what's important. This is what Musashi is really trying to teach here. Um, and to better sort of demonstrate this, let's show some contrast. So let's say that Eddie swings at me, right? Right? you see the sort of break. Now we're going to continue it a couple of times. So he swings, I block, he swings, he blocks, right? This sort of like we're cutting in towards each other, but it's, uh, it's broken. It's difficult. We never uh, really begin to generate a continuum of inertia and momentum, right? In contrast, Right? This constant just fup, 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 where the sword is in motion, where it's free from unnecessary tension, where the body is left to its own devices very dancey there, John. to get position, right? That is the primary lesson of Nagashi Uchi. Now, uh, no discussion of rhythm would be complete without the idea of breaking your opponent's rhythm, right? It's a very old idea, uh, not unique to Kyoho, certainly not a modern invention. Um, if I swing immediately at him in the time that he is moving, I produce 
a kind of automated reaction from him. But if I for a moment, you get that loss. You get thumbs, you get thumbs right? <laughs> you, you get that um, break in your opponent's rhythm. And uh, when you find yourself at that kind of, uh, uh, Musashi calls it the forehand situation, right? It's, it's where, you know, the opponent's working on you and you're working on the opponent, but you're both kind of evenly matched, right? If we just kind of stay here doing the same things in the same time, We're, we're just, uh, we don't make any headway. We're just kind of fancy dance partners. Right. Now, in single combat, this is bad because we're giving the opponent time to think of something crafty, right? To, to cogitate up some sneaky, sneaky ninja bullshit to overcome us. In large scale combat, this is bad because while I'm farting around with Eddie, la, 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 his friends are coming around and they're stabbing me with a spear, right? I don't have time when I'm fighting more than one person to dance and deal with this dude. I need to take him out fairly quick, right? So if he's swinging at me, right, I want to be able to, to take him as soon as possible, but sometimes that's not possible, right? He steps, he parries, oh my gosh, right? And now I'm safe and I just give it a split second to see what he does, right? If he tries to push, then I can respond to that and work directly into him because I've changed my, my mode. I've changed my strategy. In other words, in the beginning, my strategy is like, oh God, I've slipped to this place and I go to hit. Oh God, what? And then I do it twice. I'm like, oh, you do something once, maybe twice, but never know three times, know three times. <laughs> right? So I get caught in that, I feel okay, well, I have to completely change what I'm doing, right? Now, some people will try and avoid that, but that's gonna draw his attack, right? And so I have to be cognizant. Of what the heck you're doing. Yeah, what the heck I'm doing, of what kind of reaction I'm gonna provoke in my opponent. But if I give a situation where he knows this attack's coming, he's trying to defend himself right away before the attacks even come. And because I, uh, I give him information that he tries to respond to that's false, right? I, I use that burst of sime to be like, bam, it's happening. And he's like, oh shit, and then it's too late. He's already out. You're reacting to a thing that's... That, that never really happened, or rather that is happening at a different time and a different speed than you anticipated. Uh, this is the same kind of work as cutting as slowly as you can. So if I cut at Ed and he parries, we go through the Okanagashi Kata, right? He parries to one side, parries to the other, parries, and now he just cuts me as slow as he can. My motion is going to be out of relation in terms of movement speed and thus relative position. And so he can overcome me by virtue of his slowness, right? Now people, it doesn't have to be fast. Doesn't have to be fast. That, that's, you know, this is a concept that people understand intuitively. You'll be working with them and uh, doing whatever, right? Huh, 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 and it's not working out. They're just like, I just try and go faster. Well, what are they trying to do? They're trying to get into a place outside of the rhythm of his defense, right? What we're doing it's just assuming that you were already fighting with some gusto and that you can't just hope that your fastest is faster than his fastest. Instead, you go to where you know you can go comfortably, slower, and you take him more reliably. You always go slower in practice to figure things out. Right. So that's the, the main application that we're looking at. It isn't, it isn't, the specific steps and the attacks that we're doing, or even the wide step that wasn't previously shown, it is 
the nature of rhythmic swinging and how to capitalize on your opponent's rhythm that either you've intentionally drawn them into or that you have found that you are in yourself, right? So next, I think we'll look at some Fukuro Shinai work. Oh, no. oh yeah. And then we'll go from there. So let's look at some uh, kumitachi, some, some sparring work where uh, Nagashiuchi is applied, right? So what I'll do is I will feed attacks to Eddie. And his goal is basically to uh, receive them without it breaking his rhythm. In other words, if he swings at me, this is not good for me, right? He swings and he's trying to actually like buff, right? This has broken my body's rhythm and I have to work from then, right? It doesn't matter if I do the most perfect ukengashi step out afterwards. I've already lost my, my rhythm and my momentum and I have to build it back up again to be able to both move efficiently and to cut freely. So his goal instead is to not have a break. Now, uh, this does not necessarily mean moving fast. It does not necessarily mean uh, doing the ukanagashi motion specifically. You can do whatever he likes, right? Make sense? Sure. Pretty simple, pretty easy, right? <laughs> Good. <laughs> One, two, three. So, like we mentioned in the Kata video itself, uh, it's very easy to get caught with that, to where <gasps> you see the danger, you throw your sword up and then you step, right? You, you put your shield up, go, oh no, and then you move out of the way. Well, so, totally right, right. It's a very bad order of operations. Like you will, like, if the person knows what they're doing, they will take you, right? If he just, if he steps, or if he doesn't step rather, oh. if he just brings his sword up, right? I right, take that brachial artery. I want to take him in the belly, I, I'm gonna eat him just alive, right? And I'll know that I can do it uh, very instinctively. It doesn't take a special training. It doesn't take like kata motion to be able to do because you've keyed onto him, you've attacked, and he's still in your keyed on space, right? All right, so what do I do? I step to where I'm safe and I apply my sword, right? And that's exactly what you want to do, right? Huh. Sword is an afterthought. Your body keeps your body safe, right? This thing is just like, a, it's, a, it's a happy helper. It's like a catfish antenna, right? It's the whiskers, you're just like, where is that sword? Oh, it's over here, right? Okay, right? So, um, what we'll do, is we'll have Eddie feed me some work so you can see uh, examples of keeping up the rhythm of your striking as opposed to just uh, keeping up the rhythm as you've received, right? So if he's attacking, doesn't matter how, right? On and on and on, right? Right? On and on and on. It's soft, it's light, um, and of course, um, when you bring it into the context of fighting primarily one-handed, it begins to make much more sense. Um, if 
we were to suppose that uh, I wanted to use my long sword in the fashion of exactly how I did it in the kata. So, hasso to sort of square and center line. My cut would be substantially weaker, substantially less effective. Um, it's slower, just everything, it's, it's worse to use it one-handed if you try and match it into that two-handed method. But in Yoho, we're a one-handed method primarily. Two hands is just for when we're applying strength. We need an extra line of support, sensitivity, and sort of directional drive. So how do we make up for that? We make up for that lack of strength with momentum. Controlled momentum, right? How is that momentum generated? It's generated from the body, right? The body moves the work. And Nagash Yuchi is all about teaching you how, once you've already developed that power, to keep it in motion or when to hold it in reserve and begin anew, right? Once you understand that, uh, the concept is very simple, right? Uh, like Just like the motions of the kata itself. It is, uh, uh, my teacher uh, said that uh, Nagashi Uchi is much more difficult to explain than to actually do, right? It's very simple, right? So what we're gonna do now is look at some open-handed and some, some knife work uh, that shows this kind of principle. Let's look at some examples of the Nagashi Uchi principles with a uh, knife. Now, knife work is, I think, easier to see uh, these principles in play than sword work, just because there's, a, there's an urgency with the knife especially when you're at this sort of close distance. Close. It is. With a sword, a, you a yeah, you're, you're, you know, you have a feeling of uh, safety rearward. With the knife, because you're working here, right, where he can stab you, where you can stab him, where it just feels so intimate, um, people tend to naturally keep the flow of their work up, unless they're just, they got the jitter fear, right? Um, so Eddie's going to feed some work, right? Oh. So one piece of work flows into the next, flows into the next, right? One to the next, one to the next, one to the next, one to the next, right? It's just, um, it's continuous, right? One motion to the next motion to the next motion, conserving that power that I'm generating from my body motion and uh, really trying to have it as a pool that I can draw on for whatever I need. So in the beginning, he attacks and I use it to protect myself. I begin to generate the motion, the motion continues, right? And it goes one after another, after another. So where does breaking rhythm come into play? The smaller the weapon is, the uh, obviously the less distance it's traveling to get your opponent because you don't have the extension. That means that it takes less time. It moves faster in your perception. And so finding the moments in those times um, can be harder to see. So if Eddie attacks me and I parry, he parries, I parry. If I wait for even just a split second, he's gonna start moving into his work and I'm gonna start saying, what can I do from there, right? But whereas 
with the sword, it's very leisurely, right? In other words, uh, we kind of have all the time in the world to just sit and chill and watch him and then, you know, take the initiative in that kind of way. The knife, uh, if you think about it, you're gonna be way too slow, um, which is why drilling with the knife is so important. Because with a sword, if your opponent is obliging, you can muddle your way through the fight by thinking because you have enough time to observe it. Um, which is not to say that they're slow, but it's a, it's a leisurely kind of feeling. It's all relative, right? With the knife, there, there's, just, there's just not that time to think. I can't think I'm gonna pass, cut the radial, cross over and come in towards his body. I just go, there's a space, right? And that's the space that I'm gonna move into. And I don't even think about like, I'm not gonna move into there. It's just like, oh God, where's it safe? Where's it dangerous? Where can I get to, right? Simple idea, simple motion. Keep your elbows in. Yeah, keep your elbows in, right? Don't, don't go bleeding that trumpet. Um, so open-handed work, uh, same way, same way. If I'm punching at Eddie and he clears and he starts working on me, he needs to go and keep that flow of motion. That way it doesn't end up uh, one, two, three, <laughs> like some poorly done uh, karate kata or whatever, yeah. Instead, he does the same work, bam, bam, bam but he conserves his motion. He conserves the power that he's generated and he doesn't just let it go to waste. In other words, he doesn't just swing and lose everything, right? It's in motion and it keeps him going. And that kind of continuation, that's what we're looking for in Yoho. Now, in the same way, because the knife is short, things happen faster the hands are as short as you can get. So we're closer and we're working faster, right? And there is a, there is a, um, there's even less time to think, right? Um, and so being able to step in between a person's rhythm when you're working just with your open-handed uh, tools is, is much harder than with a sword. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it's still, Fairly simple, fairly easy. Uh, the trick is to, if you can, work with a partner and go slow at first, right? Person punches, they punch, right? And they punch and the attacks keep coming, right? And you find that in-between space going slow. Then you start to speed it up. He swings, he swings, he swings, whoop. And I find the middle space between his work to slip it. What I'm looking for from him is commitment in his body, right? I see that body prep. I see the physical uh, ripple created by his mental thought, that pebble that he's thrown into his body. Like I'm doing this, bam. And I key in on that and work on it, right? Um, because I've already set it up like a mouse trap, I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of speed here. Uh, not speed necessarily in moving my body quickly, but in moving my body directly, yeah. right? Because I'm not reacting. I've, not reacting. I'm acting, You're acting, but I'm acting based on the trigger, which seems like reacting, but in, in, in practical work, it's different, right? Make sense? Yeah. So I think that's good for uh, open-handed examples for right now. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add, Eddie? Not really. No. Just keep your arms in yeah. when you're doing close combat stuff. Right. No bleedy armpits. No, no bleedy armpits. Right? Okay. So, as always, if you want to understand this work, you have to pick up a sword and go train.